I've never seen a show so relevant, raw, vulnerable, and honest. This is definitely a show that this generation needs, and if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Before I get into this video, I just want to make a quick disclaimer and say that I talk about some things that may be triggering for some viewers, such as addiction, abuse, and many other things. So if any of those things might be triggering to you, just please keep that in mind when watching this video. Hey everyone, it's Trinan back with another video. I never make reviews on this channel, literally ever. This show is an exception. I absolutely love what this show represents. I love helping people, and I feel like this show can help people, which is why I'm making this video. I want to shed some light on this show and hopefully encourage you guys to go watch it because this show is so relatable and it's something that teens and young adults definitely should watch. For years the show focused on Zendaya's character named Rue but it also focuses on other kids that attend her high school. Each of the kids have their own personal issues and all of their issues and their storylines kind of end up trying to make one big plot and it's actually very interesting how all of their stories kind of connect to make this show what this show is. All of the backgrounds from each character represent something different. In this video, I am going to be going over each character, talking a little bit about them and how their storyline is so relevant to today's society. This video might contain some spoilers, but it's not gonna be enough to ruin the show for you. With all that being said, let's get into this video. The first character that I wanna talk about is Rue. Rue is a recovering drug addict. She was an addict who overdosed and almost died. When she got out of rehab, she started using again and then became sober. That alone is a huge epidemic in today's society. It's actually really sad how many people, especially young adults, are dealing with substance abuse. I feel like in schools, they push more about not getting pregnant and less about not using drugs. And like everything else in this show, it's a very raw and honest insight on addiction and how it not only affects the person that is addicted, but also their family and the people that love them. But then Rue ends up falling in love with Jules. It's because of Jules that Rue becomes sober and she becomes sober because she is now addicted to Jules and the love that she has for her. You see very often people being addicted to another person. It's a real thing. They crave that person and they crave their love and affection. It can be very toxic, especially if they don't feel the same as you. And that's when Jules comes into play. Jules is a transgender. And something that I love about the show is that they didn't introduce her as a transgender. They just introduced her as the new girl in town. I like that because it makes it seem more accepting and it really removes the label off of somebody. And it just shows that she's accepted for who she is. It's a very small thing that they did, but it speaks volumes. Jules loves to have hookups with people. The whole hookup culture is not talked about as much as it should be. I am not against people hooking up with each other, but you really need to be careful, especially if you're just doing it with strangers off of apps. Because that is something that can get you in trouble and put you in into unsafe situations, which is what happened to Jules. Jules also got catfished, which is also something that is very common in today's society as well. But like most catfish situations, it was somebody that she knew. And it's somebody that wasn't a stranger to her. This person was a stranger over the phone, but not in person. And that's something that's very scary when it comes to catfishing. And it's something that people need to be more careful of. That's what I said about being addicted to somebody who's not addicted to you and how that could be toxic. Jules does claim to love Rue, but Rue isn't the only person that has Jules' attention. And that's when things can get really messy. Because to that person, all they want is this other person. But to the other person, there's multiple people that they might want. It's common, I see it happen all the time. The next character that I wanna talk about is Maddie. Maddie is a survivor of abuse from her boyfriend. Physical, mental, and emotional. I don't have to say anything about that. We all know how that's relevant. Although Maddie is a survivor of abuse, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's completely innocent. Maddie lies even when she shouldn't. And she does it to protect Nate, her abuser. She knows he's no good, but that doesn't stop her. And her being abused causes her to be manipulative and controlling of others, to keep secrets and to do things for her and with her. All of those things are qualities that people who suffer from abuse have. They always run back to their abuser because they love them even though they might not love you back. And they take how they're being treated and treat other people that way because eventually that's all they know. I hope nobody has had to experience a situation like that but I know somebody who's watching this video has. If that is relevant to you, I feel like you're gonna really relate to Maddie. Now let's talk about her boyfriend, Nate. He is a lot of things and none of them are good. He's a liar, he is manipulative, he's controlling, he's an abuser, and he blackmails people. The only quality of Nate's that I have sympathy for and that I forgot to talk about it's the fact that he is in the closet and that he struggles with his sexual orientation very deeply. All I can really say about Nate is think of him as like a Bryce Walker from 13 Reasons Why. All he cares about is protecting his image and all he cares about is himself. He's the exact definition of a narcissist. Next, I am going to be talking about his dad, Cal. I feel like Nate got his qualities from his dad because they are one and the same. Cal is also very self-centered. He's also very keen on protecting his image. The something about Cal is that he loves to hook up with minors. 
and not only does he like to hook up with them, he records them and saves the footage. He doesn't have hookups with like little kids, it's teenagers, but it's safe to assume that not all of them are 18 years or older. Cal is someone that everyone loves, but he hides the truth because he knows that if they knew the truth, everybody wouldn't love him. And I feel like that's quality that a lot of people have nowadays. They want to hide their truth because they're afraid to face the truth because they know that they are not as good of a person as other people think they might be. Cassie is a very interesting character. She really just loves the attention. I think the abuse really best of her and she grew to love the attention of guys whether they're abusing her or not. Cassie has a love interest named McKay and McKay doesn't treat her the best. He makes some very stupid mistakes when it comes to treating her right. But Cassie loves to run from those problems instead of facing them. As much as she claims to love McKay, if he is treating her some type of way that she doesn't like, he has no issue getting attention from a different guy. In Cassie's eyes, she's the sweetest person she knows. In her eyes, she never does anything wrong because she just loves the attention. We all know somebody who just loves craving the attention of other people, whether if it's good or bad. I don't care if they hurt other people in the process, as long as they're feeling fulfilled, they're satisfied. But her character is so interesting to me because although she loves the attention, you can still tell that she feels bad for what she's doing. And she's very remorseful and she's very sympathetic. A lot of the time, people who are like that aren't like Cassie's character. It's definitely a different insight on people who are like that. Let's talk about her love interest, McKay. McKay is literally toxic masculinity at its finest. He will push away anything, and I mean anything, even Cassie, that stands in the way between him and making his parents proud. And also anything that is gonna ruin his friend's image of him. McKay is trying to live up to these expectations that he just cannot reach. There's even a point where he came to his dad about how he's struggling with football, but his dad tells him basically that it's all in his head. I am guilty of pushing away things because I'm trying my hardest to fulfill somebody else's expectations for myself. And that's not a good thing because others' expectations of you shouldn't matter. All that should matter is what you expect from yourself. And it took me a long time to learn that. In a way, I, I can relate to McKay, but since I relate to him, I really see how problematic he is. I know I said that Cassie is an interesting character. All these characters are, but this next character is especially interesting, Kat. She's something else. She develops this online sexual persona that puts her in control and she thrives off of that. She absolutely loves being in control of other men. She hurts men before they can hurt her. I love her character because she is just a complete feminist. She basically proves that just because she's a woman, it doesn't mean that she can't be a force to be reckoned with. The way that she goes about proving this isn't necessarily the healthiest. Like I said, she owns it. At the same time though, I do feel like she has some self-confidence issues. And that is another reason why she likes to control men and also reject men. If she has control over them and if she rejects them, then they can't hurt her and then they can't judge her for how she looks. Self-confidence is a huge thing in today's world. But that is why I love Kat's character. I think her character, in a strange way, might be one of the most relatable. The next character that I want to talk about is Fez. Fez is a drug dealer. More specifically, he's the one that got Rue on drugs. But something that I love about Fez is that even though he got Rue addicted, he also refused to help her and he refused to enable her addiction any further than what he already has. He's always trying to help her not fall back into old habits. And he honestly does feel bad that he created this issue for Rue. But I love the relationship of those two characters. Fez will go out of his way to do anything for her and for the people that he cares about. But although he loves other people and he cares for other people, he doesn't necessarily care about himself. He'll put himself in any dangerous situation to protect somebody else. Fez is the kind of person that never really had anything going for him because he didn't see his own potential and it's sad to say but that's how most drug dealers become drug dealers they don't see their potential and they don't try to strive for anything greater because they never saw anything that they felt like they could be great at this character is definitely a different perspective because you never really see perspectives of the actual drug dealers so it's actually very interesting to see fez's character and who he is as a character throughout this show let's talk about gia now gia is rue's sister and gia absolutely admires and looks up to rue but is rue really the person that Gia should be looking up to. This all comes back to seeing how addiction affects other people in your family. Gia is actually the one that found Rue when she overdosed. So that alone traumatized her. But then when Rue came out of rehab and when Gia sees what she thinks is Rue recovering, she admires Rue for that. But the thing with addicts is that they're very sneaky. Gia's character really hits home for me because I have close family that suffers from addiction. And these people are people that I once looked up to. When I was younger and these people were going through their addiction, I was still looking up to them because I didn't really understand what was going on. And I feel like that's Gia in this situation. She knows how bad Rue was, 
But like I said, she thinks she's recovering, so she doesn't think anything of it. And I was the same way. I thought these people that I looked up to was recovering, but they weren't. But slowly, like Gia, I start to put the pieces together and figure out the truth. Gia also falls into peer pressure a couple times throughout the first season of this show. And that's something that we have all gone through. We've all been in a situation where we felt pressure to do something by our peers. So I'm glad that this show incorporated that because they didn't incorporate peer pressure in a way where it's like shoplifting or jumping off a bridge. They incorporated peer pressure with drugs. A lot of the time when kids are peer pressured, they're being pressured to do drugs. So that insight is also very interesting. Leslie. Rue's and Gia's mom. She's the parent of an addict. She didn't see Rue's warning signs of her having an addiction problem until it was too late, even though those signs were very evident. Leslie has a very aggressive approach to trying to help Rue, and Rue rejects that because that's not how Rue perceives her mom and what she's doing. There's a certain way that you need to approach helping an addict, especially if you are a parent. And I have to say, the way that this character goes about trying to help Rue is not the way to do it. Fighting and arguing with the addict is not gonna help the addict because that's just gonna be a another reason to push them to want to use. If they can't go to their parents for help or for advice without a screaming match happening, what do you think they're gonna run to? The drug they're addicted to. And that's something that I hope Rue's mom ends up realizing as the show progresses. I forget this character's name, pretty sure it's Lexi. She's the least problematic character, but we don't really know much about her yet. But from what we do know, she shows what a true friend is. She was close friends with Rue when they were really young, but they kind of grew apart. But when Rue needed help, she was still there for her, even though they weren't as close anymore. Sometimes the thing that she does to help Rue and other people is high key illegal and doesn't really help their own issues. But she thinks she's just doing them a favor. I hope we learn more about her and the backstory between her and Rue's relationship because I think it'd be very interesting to get to know more about. And those are all of the characters that we know of and that I feel like are worth talking about. I feel like everybody can relate to at least one of these characters, if not more. This show shows the honest, raw truth about these people and the kind of people that they are and the things that they struggle with. And all of these issues are issues that people go through but don't necessarily talk about. Like I said, I feel like everybody needs to watch this show. Whether if you are a young teen, an adult, a parent, grandparent, I don't care who you are, just give it a chance. And it's so refreshing just seeing these things be talked about because when I was a lot younger, they were never talked about. With all that being said, leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Share with your friends if you want to or if nobody who should watch this show, definitely share this video with them. Like I said, I want more people to watch this show because I feel like it's very important for people to watch this show. That is why I made this video. Also subscribe if you are new. Tap the bell to be notified whenever I post. I always post at least one video a week. So if you tap that bell and you won't miss out on a single video. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias. The links will be in the description box down below or at the end screen of this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your support. See you guys in the next video.